Now, why are you going into this section? Ask yourself this question. Is it the liberal, and I say liberal, I mean like liberalism, not liberal right. versus yeah. conservative. Is it is it the liberal colorblind conception of reality that says that society is in a constant state of conflict? Or is it the communist that literally believe in conflict theory that say that society is in a constant state of conflict? Well, I, I mean, I feel like liberals accept that society's in a constant state of conflict. I mean, that's why they're for freedom of speech is because this is how we resolve they don't, our conflicts. No, 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 no. Well, okay, you're using the term differently. Well, yeah, I, I think. What do you mean by conflict? Because so, so conflict theory states <clears throat> that. So, well, so okay, we'll start with liberalism. So, the liberal conception of reality mm -hmm. is that under free markets. And with capitalism, society can basically incentivize people to cooperate economically in order to build society in productive social ways. Right. So the communists say that that's not true, and that's never been true, and that's actually impossible, and that society lives in a constant state of conflict where all that happens is that the rich 1% are constantly sucking up all the money, and eventually the poor people, the 99%, it gets to a point where it's so imbalanced that the 99% revolt and they tear everything down and then there's a period of equality and then it just the cycle just repeats itself over and over again. Okay. That's the so communist way of looking at it? Yes, that's the communist belief of conflict theory, essentially. Okay. That, that all of history is just a series of, of these class conflicts. Right. Okay. Uh, what is it? Um, synthesis? Is the last phase. I don't know. Right. If, anyway. Right. But anyway, uh, but liberalism does accept that there's conflict in society. Yes. Liberalism that has to be mitigated it, through society. Right. Liberalism is a way to mitigate conflict. conflict peacefully right. without revolt or revolution or overturning society, all the things that the communists want. Right. Right. Yeah, but liberalism, the difference is liberalism says that people can work together. Right. And that also that history can be shown to be based on individual people and individual country, individual groups, um, interests. Right. Either aligning or conflicting with each other. And the communists say, no, no, no. They reduce everything to literally the, the class lens and say, no, no, no. It's all just the 1%. Everything's just the 1%. But don't the, the poorest. don't liberals also say though that people can resolve their conflicts peacefully through, of course, incrementalism, freedom right. of speech, right, um, conflict and change. Yes. Yeah. Right. The communists don't believe that that's possible because Equal their protection view, under the law. That's what right. I was trying to think. Of. That's this is another reason why the communists don't believe in incrementalism. They don't think it's possible because they believe in this in this conflict theory, is that under that conflict theory. Things only become incrementally worse. They never become incrementally better. So everything just gets <laughs> okay. worse, 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 worse until revolution. It. Until it ha reaches a breaking point and then right. there's a complete resetting of society. Right. Society resets. Maybe it's more equitable for a time period, but then it just it like revert. It just again goes back towards you know uh, one percent control. I mean that is kind of the how things work under autocracies. I mean, obviously, right. Russia is right. going to have a great resetting here when Putin is finally killed or exiled. Right. But so the, the reason I'm bringing this up and why this is interesting, because he's going to go into how this applies to fascism and completely ignore. This goes exactly to what I'm saying. Fascism and communism are so much more closely aligned with each other than either of them are with liberalism. Right. Yeah. It's a philosophy. Look. All the turmoil that's taken place in the Soviet Union and yeah. Russia over the last twenty years is all because of because because of this. So every time he talks about fascism here, in your mind, you can just you can w listen to everything he's saying and just swap out a couple <laughs> nouns, and it's literally just communism. This understanding, white culture can't recognize the stakes. Fascism exists in a state of permanent conflict. Things like the communism states. Communism exists in a state of permanent conflict, literally, right. <laughs> by conflict theory.
declaring an indefinite state of martial law, suspending elections, or executing members of government are justified on the grounds that the people are in danger and need to be protected. Literally the exact same thing the communists right. said with the Vanguard Party. Right, yeah. This is insane. How does he not see this? And mobilized. Now, this isn't unique to fascism. Between the Cold War, the war on drugs, and the war on terror, the U.S. has been in some form of ongoing conflict for the last three generations. So, so... <laughs> he fucking... He's so stupid. He takes this fascist concept of we're in constant conflict, so we need... To, Internal conflict, by the way. Mm -hmm. So we need to, you know, purge out the bad people. And we need to have like an iron fist that prevents people from voting and blah, 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 blah. Have authoritarian rule. Okay. And he doesn't attribute this to, to the USSR. He doesn't attribute this to China. He says, no, no, no. It's the United States of America that's engaged in this. <laughs> right. Well, obviously, he wants to say the United States is fascist. That's the, that's what he's trying to do here. He even brings up the Cold War, and he doesn't. He, he said it's the U.S. that's engaged in the conflict, not not the USSR. Right. God, he's such a piece of shit. But you'll note the Cold War didn't end on a battlefield. It ended when the Soviet Union collapsed in on itself. Communism, terrorism, and drug dealing are patterns of behavior, and they wax and wane, often for reasons outside our control. Geopolitics may some the fact that the fact that the Soviet Union was allowed to collapse in on itself, first of all, proves a that communism fucking sucks <laughs> and doesn't work, and b that America wasn't the oh we're just gonna go in and fucking kill every one nation, fascist nation that he and all these other people like to pretend it was. Yeah, yeah. Just Someday shift back. such that yeah let it die. Well, also, I mean, it's hilarious too because, like, so so after nine eleven, yes, there was a curtailing of a lot of freedoms and things did change after nine eleven. Um, but the war on drugs <laughs> did, did America become a fascist nation? The war on drugs? No. What the fuck is he <laughs> talking about? Well, he would say yes because of all, everyone yes. that's been incarcerated. So okay, right. Slavery is still legal in America. It's just happening in our prisons. What's up with all this fentanyl stuff? Such <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, you know, if America was really the fascistic, you know, country that he claims they would be, we would have taken over Mexico long ago. To you know, because of all the drug trafficking and stuff, we would have taken over Mexico. We would have started attacking Central and South American countries openly that drug was coming, drugs were coming from, and all this other stuff. In, so. in 20 years, Mexico is going to be like Canada. It's going to be great. That would be great. It is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, that would be nice if that's the case. They have to kind of weed out the cartels first. That's what so, we'll be, yeah. Not super confident about that. But. We're working on it. How fun would it be if if this would this would like if make Mexico everyone's head... If Mexico was as safe as Canada, that would be No, I'm going to say, amazing. this would make everyone's head like spin. I don't. I would love for this to happen just to see how people would react. I don't know how they would react. Like, what would happen if Joe Biden started drone striking uh, Cartels. drug cartel people? Yeah. He'd get reelected. I, he would. <laughs> he, he would. They could, they, could, they could wheel up Joe Biden, like, in a hospital bed, barely conscious after that point. That, <laughs> so, would, that would be tough. That would be, a, that would be a good dealing with the cartels south of the border. Right. Yeah, but I just I would be so I'd be very curious to see the political fallout to that to see what would the would the Democrats go along with the left go along with it because it's from Biden, even though they would be reflexively against it. And would the right have to like actually pat Biden on the back and say that's a good thing or, or like what would they do? Do you think American businesses are worried about Mexico being as prosperous as canada because then, how would they be worried about that because they get a lot of migrant labor a lot I, of agriculture the, the, runs off of migrant labor yeah a lot of agriculture does and that'd be a very interesting thing to see what would happen in that yeah. situation but 
but a lot of businesses i think the majority of businesses would be would gain so much more because they'd have uh you know the majority of businesses that don't re- that don't rely on like cheap labor especially like you know the majority of businesses in america that are not agricultural or that don't require that kind of labor would be jumping for joy because they just see it as more people to buy their shit yeah that's true what's up with that that's crab ter- thing you do on twitter what's going on there your poof crab thing. It's a secret. I can tell you offline as long as you promise not to tell anyone. Do you have crabs? No. Are it's they... a pre- it's a I'll say this. It's a prediction. Sitch has a crab meter. He's like whether or not Yeah, I have a I do have a crab meter. How many There's crabs a... bite his crotch? <laughs> I have a crab meter that's going on Twitter. It's a it's a timer and a prediction. Oh, it is. Yes. Okay. So you'll you'll see if it manifests or not. Okay. Are we getting more or crabs or less crabs? I don't oh, know. you're getting more crabs, baby. More crabs. Okay. Many, many more crabs. Okay. Honestly, I was going to do one every day, and I just forget all the time, so it's very spotty. That's prevalent, or that lowers the demand for drugs. Communism can be fought with diplomacy and economic sanctions because communists can choose not to be communist anymore. And fascists have no use what? for soft power. To justify a military dictatorship, they need an opponent that won't just go away on its own one day. Says a guy who's making a video about Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> Says the guy, he's literally the fascist. He's the one that's saying the opponent that won't just go away on its own is the evil white racist in America. Well, it's white supremacy now. It's like right. a systemic right. thing. Oh my God. You, as long as there's a white majority. How do you construct a video like so with this lack of self-awareness oh my god 